It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, today we're going to jump in that interactive board. I want to talk about data and AI. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking for a data company. I'm looking for a company out there that could give dealers data and information to help them not only increase revenues, but increase profit by improving processes. And the reason I'm looking for a data company is our friends over there at NextEra were sold to Valsoft. Valsoft put NextEra underneath the MPS monitor flag, and I'm just not a fan of that. I can't support that concept anymore. But before I get into today's episode, I do have a couple of updates. One of the updates is around my episode I did last week, DCA Wars. And the other update is around the Homeland Security banning Nine Star Native subsidiaries from bringing product into the U.S. supply chain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big story, probably the biggest story in our industry in at least three decades. The good news is Lexmark had a meeting at Lexington. And on Friday, I saw some content flooding around from some of the industry's media and analysts. So they were there in Lexington when this story broke. So I'm sure some of the media and analysts had some opportunity to talk with Alan or some of the senior leaders at Lexmark to get some thoughts on this story. So we should start seeing Lexmark coming out into the marketplace today, hopefully, addressing some of these concerns. But tomorrow, I do have a very detailed episode regarding the DHS's ban on Nine Star and eight of its subsidiaries from bringing product into the U.S. supply chain. And that ban was part of the enforcement of the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, UFLPA. Ladies and gentlemen, over the weekend, I dug through the consolidated financials of Nine Star. And I have some questions for our friends at Lexmark. When you look at Nine Star and its subsidiaries, you look at Lexmark and its subsidiaries, it is a very complex, convoluted, well, let's just call it extremely complicated. So I want to ask some questions of our friends at Lexmark so we can try to uncomplicate this a little bit. Because ladies and gentlemen, when Nine Star, who owns Lexmark, has eight of its subsidiaries banned from bringing product into the U.S. supply chain, that's a big issue for our industry, and we are definitely going to stay on top of that issue. But let's jump in. To today's episode, I want to talk about data. I need some help from the audience. I need some help from the audience. I'm going to ask you to give me some references on a company that I'm going to mention at the end of today's episode. But let me talk about this update on the DCA Wars really quick. We all know that EKM was purchased by Tech Data, now called TD Senex, back in 2021. But ladies and gentlemen, over the weekend, I noticed that Colin Bajer, who was heading up EKM, is leaving the company. And folks, the bottom line is I believe that when Tech Data, now TD Cetics bought EKM. They bought it for one reason. And that reason was to help HP manage the Amplify Agreement, was to help the most overreached OEM on the planet with some DCA technologies, and that they could partner with Tech Data and now TD Cetics on those technologies. The EKM software, in my opinion, was never about the internet of everything, and we're going to hook everything up to this and be the RMM tool for everybody. When you, lead, when you read about what they do and the categories of their solutions, it's all around print. You know, the other thing could have happened was maybe TD Cetics realized, okay, this EKM platform is really just about print. I thought we were going to be the internet of everything and we were going to manage all the assets on the network. And folks, at the end of the day, there was a shakeup over there at EKM. When I did my DCA Wars episode, I suggested that maybe EKM was going to be bought by Valsoft. Maybe. Maybe TD Settings is going to just divest themselves of EKM, and maybe part of that divesting is having Colin Bajer leave. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Let's talk about data, folks. Data, AI, man, I'm starting to see a lot of presentations out there. AI, AI, everybody's talking about AI. Let me ask you all a quick question. What do you hope to discover? What do you hope to discover? Our industry has more data right now. It ignores but yet we want to use AI to ignore more data. We want to listen to people that are so-called AI experts. Let me share a thought with you. The training for many calling themselves experts in AI. I saw this. It was actually a satire video that I saw. But I, I just thought this was so relevant. So I'm going to share it with you. The training for many calling themselves experts in AI. And I want to start out by saying this. I'm not an expert in AI and I'm never going to tell you I am. But ladies and gentlemen... I think a lot of the experts you're talking about got their training here. They watch Star Wars. They collect all the figurines. They know all the characters in depth. 
They speak the languages of all the aliens. <laughs> Here's what I want to tell you all, my friends. Science fiction is fun. However, using science to engage with reality takes the ability to ignore fiction. Let me read that again. Science fiction is fun. However, using science to engage with reality takes the ability to ignore fiction. Trekkies are focused on figurines and fiction. Trekkies are focused on figurines and fiction. Business experts are focused on how figures relate to reality. Business experts are focused on how figures relate to reality. If the people you're talking to, whether that's about data, whether that's about DCA tools, whether that's about anything, if they can't articulate to you how you're going to use that to improve a process to help you grow your revenue and increase your profits, don't listen to them because that's what you need to do. You need to grow your revenue and improve your processes so you can increase your profits. And switching DCA tools as an example is probably not going to help you do that any better, regardless of what these folks might say. I want to read you some questions and then I'm going to share with you a data company that I need some feedback on. So here's the questions, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to question the use of the data. Does your dealership have parts and supplies which are listed as assets, but in reality will never be used? Are you ignoring the data? Is your technician accountable to the contract revenues? And is, is he accountable for 80% of the time? Are they either going to a contract, from a contract, or in front of a contract? When I say a contract, I'm talking about a piece of equipment. Are you ignoring the data? Do you know the daily cost of ineffective time management? Are you ignoring the data? Are you eliminating hardware which is inferior to profitability as compared with your other hardware offerings? Are you ignoring the data? Do you challenge service employees on realities of third-party parts and supplies? Are you ignoring the data? Do you dig deep into sales close ratios and sales realities? Are you ignoring the data? Can you show that each sales territory you have is fair and equitable and capable of producing? Do you have the data? Can you clearly package and demonstrate the income opportunity each territory you need to fill will generate? Do you have the data? Can you identify the zip codes you should be blitzing where your competitors install base market share is much greater than yours? Or are you still blind prospecting? Do you have the data? Do you have the quotas that are based on precise net new expectations individualized by each sales professional sales team that are fair, equitable, and proven successful? Do you have the data? Do you have a way of seeing the click growth rate shrink in each one of your sales territories is producing quarter to quarter? Do you have the data? Ladies and gentlemen, do you have the data? If you have the data, are you ignoring the data? Now I want to share with you a data company I did a demo with. I want to make it clear that Pros Elite is not a sponsor at the end of the day with Ray. I'm not sure if they qualify yet, but what I need to know from all of my friends out in the marketplace that use Pros Elite or use this pivot software, I want some feedback because I got to tell you something. I looked at the demo. This is some pretty fancy stuff. They can definitely help you with your processes. They can help you grow your revenues and they can definitely help you increase your profits. The question is, those of you that use this software, are you doing those things with it? Are you growing your revenues? Are you improving your processes? Are you increasing your profit? If you are, please reach out to me because I would like to gauge a little bit deeper with our friends over there at Pros Elite. Because our industry, they need some experts behind them. And the experts behind them, they don't need to be confused by being part of some fantasy roll-up, if you will. And I shared enough thoughts around the DCA tool companies, MPS Monitor buying up next air as an example. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to take our industry serious and it needs to be taken serious at the dealer level because the fantasies and what I call stupid money floating around the industry regarding some of these private equity groups and what they're buying doesn't have anything to do with the reality of the marketplace. The reality of the marketplace, guess what? Those dealer friends of mine that own these dealerships, they live in that every single day. So forget about the fantasies. Focus on the realities. Focus on the data you have. And if you need to get better data, then you need to look for folks like Pros Elite or Pivot. But before I can really endorse them, I want to know how they're doing with you, the dealers. Please reach out to me because everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see you all tomorrow.